Hello and welcome back to my job tutorial series on how to teach you how to program um well not how to teach you how to program uh, teaching you how to program a physics simulator. Um if or if you weren't um here last time, I hope you were, we finished actually making the free body diagram. So we can add um gravity and you know set its angle and set how long it is. It'll draw that proportionate to its size and stuff, and go us. Now, today is what to do if we have, let's say, two f more than one force acting on the object, and we wanted to know the net, the resultant vector. So if you have one force going this way and one force going this way, it's obviously going to go in between them, the resultant vector. So we're going to program that today. So uh, maybe you know trigonometry, maybe you don't. But if you do, it'll definitely make you less confused. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is actually go back into our ye old method force. It's really not that old. Last episode we made these three things for convenience. Because one, uh, the two-string method, as you can see, with the Java people recommend. Um, let me see. Uh, the result should be a concise but informative representation that is easy for a person to read. It is recommended that all subclasses override this method. So it seems as we automatically extend force, even though we don't, all classes automatically extend force. I mean object. Force extends object. That's why it's overridden. So um, we're going to do something a bit more um, uh, a bit more conventional, because if we give the name of it, then the virtual machine might be confused. So we're just going to give the name plus... Um, at plus this dot force we're just gonna do something a bit more friendly so we can easily distinguish even though we won't be really be using this method that often I'm using at because you know the vector is you normally do like at a certain amount of degrees is the direction so that's just for um friendly sake if you wanna like download this program and do editing if you want to do like a two string, it'll return that. Either, either way, it's just what they want. And we did those. But now we're going to add two more methods. Now this is going to be invaluable for today's episode. We're going to do a public... Oh my god. Already off to the bad spelling. Today's today's episode is going to be interesting. We're going to do get comp force, which stands for get component force, and this is going to be the X force. So basically, when you have a diagonal force or a diagonal force, it's a resultant vector of two component vectors, one going along the x-axis and then another going along the y-axis. This one is going to get the component vector going along the x-axis. So what we're going to do is just some math. We're going to do double new vector equals um, this dot vector. Then we're going to do some math. We're going to do float x equals convert to float. Math, maybe if I did a parenthesis instead of a nine, math dot cosine of our good old friend renderer dot two radians new vector, and then we're gonna multiply this by get force. Because um, what this is, what um, it's going to return when we cosine it is a, um, a decimal value that's less than one. So we need to multiply it by however long we want it to be. So that's simple enough if you know your unit circle trigonometry. So we're turning a new force with no name. It will have a length of x, and it of course it will be zero degrees. Because um, even though our thing might be at 45 degrees, its component vector on the x-axis will be at, well, 0 degrees, since 0 degrees is the x-axis. And as you can imagine, if we want easy way to get the component vector on the x-axis, axis, I am sorry, uh, we also want the one on the y-axis, because it's all going to make it more easy for us to calculate the um, resultant vector of all of our things. So here we go, we're going to straight away, which is, you know, unusually familiar with the previous one. Of course, this time we're going to use sine, since it's the height, 
and you know um, sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse obviously uh, who didn't see that coming yeah <laughs> new vector multiplied by get force and then of course we return our new force no name length the length of y and this time it's at 90 degrees since 90 degrees is the y axis did not want to do that wanted to put it over here either way both are correct so there we have that's all we needed in our force now we are going to do most of the math in render now right now it's only rendering the current vectors and in order to make it render the um the resultant vector this is where the fun begins one of my favorite quotes name that quote comment section first one wins don't know what they win but it'll be good um so we're going to make a whole array list that is basically just going to be for adding up all the um, the forces because imagine um in the if you had two things uh, the for on the opposite sides of the free body on the free body one is going 50 newtons to the right the other one's going 40 newtons to the left left basically you add those which will be 50 plus negative 40 this way it's just going to be positive 10. Positive is going to be to the right, negative is to the left, so that means the net force will be 10 newtons this way. But we'll get into that more when we get into the math. Diamond notation, so we don't have to write out force again. I mean, come on, is that a long word or what? Really isn't. Uh, then we do the same for y. It's mainly just a lot of uh, similar things between them. And then we do, then we do declare some doubles. Net force x equals zero, obviously, and then net force y will of course always equal zero. I mean, it won't always equal zero. Uh, also, at the top, we want to do a not that a public static double net force as well. We want it to equal zero just so we don't get any problems. And then we'll also get our net vector to equal zero. And we'll just separate these out a bit so it looks a little less gay. Um, so along those lines, now that we have those set up, now we can actually start assigning the values. Uh, four integer i equals, of course, zero. i this time will be less than force array dot size and here we go now we're gonna do x comp x comp uh we're going to add force array dot get i dot get component force x and likewise for this one over here Force array dot get i oh get i dot get component force y. The resemblance is amazing, is it not? So now we're just going to do net force x plus equals since we're just adding them all together. The forces that is dot get i not u. What the hell is u? That sounded weird. What the hell is u? Sounds insulting. Um, then we'll get I again, and then we'll just get force. There we go. That's all we need to put in there. Now we start doing some real math. Net force equals... M now we're just doing the Pythagorean theorem to um, find the... We're doing the Pythagorean theorem just so we can find the hypotenuse, because the hypotenuse will be the length of our resultant vector. We'll do something else to get the degrees. So we'll do math, math dot power. Our first value will be net force x, and it'll be to the power of 2. And we're going to add that to math dot power. And this time it's going to be net force y as well to the power of 2. Okay. Now we'll do net now we're going to find the net vector, and that's equals, we have to convert 2 degrees. Because right now, we're going to do math dot arc sine, which is basically the inverse of sine. Since, you know, if you solve for the equation sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, that means arc sine of opposite hypotenuse equals theta. And what we're getting is theta, which is also the net vector. 
And since we put a radian in as the parameter, we'll get a radian out. And we need to convert that to degrees for humanity's sake. So we'll get the arc sine of net force y over net force. Because that's opposite, which is the up and down one, over hypotenuse, because uh, net force is our hypotenuse, as we said in the previous line. And if net vector is less than zero, as in if it's negative, we're just going to do plus equals 360. And that's just so it's more legible and the math can handle it without complaining about negatives. Now, we actually get to um, the part uh, that's not very different from this, where we have to count, actually um, figure out stuff. Where we actually have to find out the co separate coordinates that we need to draw it to. So we have to convert that back into radians. Um, we, again, actually, you know, this is a lot easier. <laughs> Laziness is the way to go. So we do this again. We do rads. And now, since these rad, this variable rads is in a for loop, that means it stays in that for loop and it doesn't go anywhere else. And so we have a rads out here and it doesn't go anywhere else but here. Now we're just going to replace newtons with net force. And uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, since all programming is, is I have to trust it on faith. Uh, <sighs> uh, what we're going to be doing is going to do G set color because we want to be able to distinguish it and what I like blue my second favorite color green while it is my favorite color um, isn't very easy to see now if we did this we can hope it works <laughs> oh okay it, it should work I don't remember making any mistakes so app 1 we set that to 50 as you can see it's also blue because it draws the resultant vector after our component vector so our net force, if we have one force acting on an object, the net force is equal to that one force. We're just going to we're gonna set this to 30, because we're going to make a normal triangle. Because you know, if you have a right triangle with the edges 30 and 40, the hypotenuse is going to be 50. Um, obviously, we can't figure out what the net force is yet, but we're going to set that to 90, and we're going to set it to 40. As you can see, our net force, it works. It's This is 50. Newtons, you can take my word on that because it is because I, I programmed the math. I know how it works. Shut up. So this is 50 newtons, 50 pixels long, and its degree measure should also from here should be about 53.3 long floating point. And there you have it. That has um, been quite a successful episode. How we can do this? The next episode, we're gonna do something with this. And actually, now that I think about it, um, we're gonna change this to something else. Because when we, no matter what we're ho hovering over, I'm going to have in the right-hand corner, it's uh, going to display the net force, so you can see where we go. And right here, we're going to change that to the body. And it's going to display the mass and the acceleration of the body. You can change the mass of the body, but the acceleration is decided on its lonesome. And, uh, yeah. That's plans for next episode. It should be um, a pretty easy episode. Since it's mainly working with Swing, this episode we were obviously working with Java.Ot for drawing all this stuff. So, uh, let's just have some fun and add one more vector. We'll just make this like 75 because we don't care. As you can see, it's right here, so it's obviously adding to that. I'm just going to make this 330. So now you see our resultant vector somewhere over there. We can also set this to like 135 and our resultant vector somewhere over there. But, yep, there you have it. I will see you next episode when we worry about those um, information panels. And, as always, um, good luck programming.